Hi everyone, it's Professor Primington, and today we're going to talk about the law of signs. So in previous sections, we used trigonometric ratios to solve right triangles. The trigonometric functions can also be used to solve oblique triangles, which are triangles that do not have a right angle. Note that an oblique triangle will either have three acute angles, where you have three angles that are less than 90 degrees, or you have two acute angles and one obtuse angle, where you have two angles that are less than 90 degrees and one angle that's actually greater than 90 degrees. So this triangle that's on the left, you have three acute angles, so all angles are less than 90 degrees, or you have the triangle that's on the right where you have two acute angles, but you have one obtuse angle. So it's called an obtuse triangle. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to use the law of signs to solve oblique triangles. And we're also going to solve applied problems using the law of signs. So in this section, we're going to study the law of signs to actually solve an oblique triangle. We're going to decide whether we have actually enough information to actually determine for all the sides that have missing links and also any missing angles. To simplify the notation, we're going to label our oblique triangle so that side A is actually across from angle A, side B will actually be across from angle B, and side C will be across from angle C. That's just to simplify the notation. There's actually going to be four different cases when we're actually solving an oblique triangle. For instance, say you're given two angles and an included side, then it's actually clear that one and only one triangle can be formed. So in this case, you actually have what's called an ASA or SAA triangle, a angle side angle or side angle angle triangle, where two angles and one included side are given. So in other words, you have two angles that are given and you have the included side. So this is case one where you have an ASA triangle or you have two angles and an included side and this is what's called an side angle angle triangle. So you have two angles that are known and you have one included side that is also known in the oblique triangle. In this case, we're going to use the law of signs to actually solve the oblique triangle. On the other hand, let's say you have two sides and an included angle that is opposite one of the two sides that are known. Then a unique triangle is determined and in this case, the oblique triangle is called an SSA triangle or a side-side angle triangle. So in this case, you have two sides that are known and you have one included angle that's also known. And so an angle is actually across from one of the known sides. And so this is called case two, a side-side angle triangle. And so you will also use the law of sines to solve this oblique triangle. If two sides and an included angle are known, then a unique triangle is determined as well. However, in the third case, you have an included angle that is not actually opposite one of the known sides given, and it's what's called a side angle side triangle. So in case three, you have an SAS triangle or a side angle side triangle. It's where you have two sides that are known, and you also have one angle that's known, but the side opposite the angle is unknown. You don't have that information. In this case, you actually use what's called the law of cosine, which we'll talk about in the next section. However, if we know all three angles but no sides, then we cannot actually uniquely determine the triangle because many triangles can have the same three angles and just have different lengths for the sides. This is the same case as knowing three sides and no angles. So this is called case four. You have SSS triangle or a side-side-side triangle. You have three sides that are known, but you don't have any information about the three angles or vice versa. You may have all three angles, but you may not have any information about the three sides. So we'll use what's called the law of cosines to solve this type of oblique triangle as well in the next section. So in this last case, you have an oblique triangle where you have three sides that are known, but no angles. And so it's an SSS triangle or side, side, side triangle. So in general, a triangle is determined by three of its six parts, consisting of three angles and three sides, as long as one of the three parts is a side. You will actually have a triangle formed. Therefore, we have the following four cases to consider when solving an oblique triangle. So case one is where you have one side and two angles that are given. You have an angle side angle or a side angle angle triangle. We'll use the law of sines to solve that type of triangle. Case two, two sides and the angle opposite one of those sides is called a SSA triangle or a side-side angle triangle. And so again, case two, we'll use the law of sines to solve its oblique triangle. Case three, you have two sides and an included angle, which will be a side angle side triangle. And so in this case, we'll use the law of cosines. And in case four, if you have three sides given, that's an SSS triangle or a side-side-side triangle. Again, we'll use the law of cosines to solve that type of triangle. So let's talk about the law of sines. The law of sines states that any triangle, the lengths of the sides are proportional to the sines of the corresponding opposite angles of those sides. So the theorem, the law of sines, 
in a triangle ABC, so keep in mind that side A is across from angle A, side B is across from angle B, and side C is across from angle C in this triangle ABC, we have the following ratios. The sine of angle A divided by the length of side A is equal to the sine of angle B divided by the length of side B, which is also equal to sine of angle C divided by the length of side C. You have three different proportions or three different ratios that can be formed from this statement. Sine of A divided by A is equal to sine of B divided by B, or sine of A divided by A is equal to sine of C divided by C, or sine of B divided by B is equal to sine of C divided by C. So example one, we're going to use the law of sines to track a satellite. So suppose that a satellite orbiting the Earth passes directly overhead at observation stations in Phoenix and Los Angeles, which are 340 miles apart. So you have the satellite that's orbiting the Earth, you have Los Angeles at point A, and Phoenix is denoted as point B, and A and B are 340 miles apart. So we have A is Los Angeles and B is Phoenix, we'll call C the satellite, and so side C is 340 miles, side B will actually be opposite angle B, and side A will be opposite angle A. And so we're given a couple angles. At the instant that the satellite is between the two stations, its angle of elevation is simultaneously observed to be 60 degrees at Phoenix and 75 degrees at Los Angeles. How far is the satellite from Los Angeles? So we're trying to find out what is the distance B that is the satellite from Los Angeles, which is opposite the angle 60 degrees. So notice that you actually have two angles that are given, that's actually known, and you actually have one side that's actually also known, that's the 340 miles, which is across from the angle C. So this is actually case one. You have a side and you have two angles. So it's side, angle, angle, triangle. We'll use the law of sines to actually solve this oblique triangle to find out what is the distance B between the satellite and Los Angeles. So this is a triangle that we have. And so notice we actually know angle C, the oblique triangle, the side, angle, angle, triangle, Angle C is actually 180 degrees because all triangles sums of their angles actually add up to 180 degrees. So 180 degrees subtract 75 degrees and also subtract 60 degrees. That can help us find out the measure of angle C. And so it comes out to be 45 degrees. So we have a triangle at 75 degrees, 60 degrees, and 45 degrees. So now notice what we have. We have 45 degree angle and across from the 45 degree angle is a side that we know is 340 miles. So if we want to find out what is the length of side B, we need to use its opposite angle, which is 60 degrees. So let's set up the law of sines. So sine of angle B divided by length of side B, which is equal to sine of angle C divided by the length of side C. So let's fill in the information that we have. We know that angle B was 60 degrees, so sine of 60 degrees divided by B, which is unknown to us, is equal to sine of 45 degrees, which is angle C, divided by 340 miles, which was side C. And so we have one unknown in this proportion, which is side B. So we can solve for B. So since you have two fractions equal to one another, you can cross multiply and those products are actually equal. So 340 times sine of 60 degrees is equal to B times sine of 45 degrees. And now if you want to get B by itself, divide both sides of the equation by sine of 45 degrees. And so B is 340 times 60 degrees divided by sine of 45 degrees. And so B is the exact value of 340 times sine of 60 degrees and then get that answer and divide by sine of 45 degrees. So since our angles are actually in degree measure, we actually need to have our calculator set in degree mode. So once it's in degree mode, we can do 340 times sine of 60 degrees, close parenthesis on the sine function, and then divide by sine of 45 degrees, and that's approximately 416.413, if you round to three decimal places, miles, because B was representing the distance between Los Angeles and a satellite. And so the satellite is about 416 miles from Los Angeles, if you round to the nearest mile. And so that's how we use the law of sines. We had three of the four pieces of information. We had angle B, we had angle C, we had side C, and we were trying to find out what is the length of side B. And we can use the law of sines in that case. So example two, we're going to solve a triangle. Solve the following oblique triangle by finding the lengths of the missing sides and the missing angles. Round your answers to two decimal places. So if we're going to solve this oblique triangle, we need to find the lengths of all three sides and the measure of all three angles. So let's see what we actually are given in the triangle and see what we actually need to find. So we have angle A is 20 degrees, and we have angle C is 25 degrees, and we also have the length of side C is 80.4. But the other two sides are unknown. We have side A is unknown, side B is unknown, and we also have one angle that's unknown, that's angle B. 
However, keep in mind that all triangles need to have their angles add up to 180 degrees. So if we have two of the three angles, we can find out the missing angle by taking 180 degrees, subtract 25 degrees, and also subtract 20 degrees, and so we find out the measure of angle B is 135 degrees. So this obtuse angle has a 135 degree measure. And so now that we've figured out all three angles, we have two sides that we need to find. So let's use the law of sines. Because we have angle A is 20 degrees, we can find out what is side A if we know angle C and side C now. And so we can set up the law of sines saying sine of angle A divided by length A is equal to sine of angle C divided by length C. We actually know this information, sine of 20 degrees, because A was given as 20 degrees, divided by A, which is unknown, is equal to sine of 25 degrees, that's angle C, divided by side C, which is known 80.4. And so again, we have enough information to find out what is the length of side A. We know three of the four different values in this ratio, or proportion. And so we can cross multiply because these two fractions are equal to one another. So A times sine of 25 degrees is equal to sine of 20 degrees times 80.4. So if you have A times sine of 25 degrees and you want to get A by itself, divide both sides of the equation by sine of 25 degrees. And so A is equal to 80.4 times sine of 20 degrees and then divide by sine of 25 degrees. And so the length of side A would be 80.4 times sine of 20 degrees divided by sine of 25 degrees. Again, make sure your calculator is in degree mode, otherwise the answer will not make sense. And so this is approximately 65.07 if you round the two decimal places. So the length of side A is 65.07 units. And so now we actually figured out side A is about 65.07. And so now we have one side left to find out its length in terms of this triangle to solve the triangle. And so we need to find out what is the length of side B because we now know what is the angle B is 135 degrees. So we actually can find out what is the length of side B. So again, use a law of sines. So sine of B divided by length B, which is equal to sine of angle C divided by length of side C. And so this gives us sine of B, which we found out was 135 degrees. So sine of 135 degrees divided by length of B, which we don't know yet, is equal to sine of angle C, so sine of 25 degrees, divided by length side C, which is 80.4. And so again, we have three of the four different pieces of this ratio. We have sine of 135 degrees, sine of 25 degrees, and 80.4, and we want to find out what is the length of side B. And so again, these two fractions in the proportion or ratio are equal to one another, and so you can cross multiply, and those two products should be equal to each other. And so B times sine of 25 degrees is equal to 80.4 times sine of 135 degrees. And so again, if you want to get B by itself, divide both sides of the equation by sine of 25 degrees. So B is equal to 80.4 times sine of 135 degrees, and then divide by sine of 25 degrees. And so this will give us 80.4 times sine of 135 degrees, close parenthesis on the sine function, and then divide by sine of 25 degrees, and that is approximately 134.52 if you round the two decimal places. And so that's the length of side B, about 134.52 units. And so now we actually have found all three lengths of the sides, and we also found out the measure of all three angles. So we have solved the oblique triangle. Angle A is 20 degrees. Side A is approximately 65.07. Angle B was 135 degrees. Side B is approximately 134.52. And then angle C was 25 degrees, and side C was given to us as 80.4. So let's skip ahead to example six. We're going to calculate a distance using the law of sines. To measure the height of a mountain, a surveyor takes two sightings of a peak at a distance of 900 meters apart on a direct line to the mountain. The first observation results in an angle of elevation of 47 degrees. And so this is the person's first sighting. The angle of elevation to the top of the mountain is 47 degrees. And the second sighting actually results in an angle of elevation of 35 degrees. And so the second sighting actually to the top of the mountain is a 35 degree angle, and the two sightings are 900 meters apart. And so if the transit is two meters high, what is the height H of the mountain? And so we want to find out what is the height H. So notice that there actually are two different triangles in this figure. You actually have a right triangle formed for the 47 degree angle and the height H of the mountain, and you have a right angle. However, you also have another triangle that's formed from the second sighting, which is an oblique triangle because you have a 35 degree angle and then you have no other information other than the adjacent side to 35 degrees is 900 meters. You do not know the length of this side or the other side of the triangle nor the missing angle. So let's solve the oblique triangle first using the law of sines. 
So our oblique triangle is actually a side angle angle triangle, or an SAA triangle. Notice you have a 35 degree angle. The adjacent side was 900 meters. We do not know the angle C, nor the angle B, and we also do not know the length of side A or the length of side B. So notice that your 47 degree angle from your right triangle and angle B actually are supplementary angles. In other words, they actually form a straight line or 180 degree angle. So measure of angle B is actually 180 degrees. Subtract the 47 degree angle from the right triangle and actually angle B is 133 degrees. So we actually have this angle, this obtuse angle in the oblique triangle. And so that tells us that if we actually have two angles in this oblique triangle, 35 degrees and also 133 degrees, we actually can find out the measure of angle C. So the angle of measure C is 180 degrees, subtract 35 degrees, subtract 133 degrees, we actually found out for angle B. And so angle C is actually a 12 degree angle. So now if we want to find out what are the lengths of side A and also side B, we're going to need to use the law of sines. So let's set up one ratio or one proportion. Sine of angle B divided by side B is actually equal to sine of angle C divided by side C. So we're using angle C and side C because we actually do know angle C and we also know the side opposite angle C is 900 meters. However, we also know angle B, but we don't know side B. So we know three of the four different pieces of this proportion. We have sine of 12 degrees divided by 900 meters is equal to sine of 133 degrees divided by length of side B. So again, if these two fractions are equal to one another, you actually have the products of the cross multiplications actually equal. So B times sine of 12 degrees is equal to 900 times sine of 133 degrees. And so if you take B times sine of 12 degrees and divide by sine of 12 degrees, you actually can get B by itself. So B is equal to 900 times sine of 133 degrees divided by sine of 12 degrees, which would be 900 times sine of 133 degrees divided by sine of 12 degrees, and make sure your calculator is in degree mode, is approximately 3,165.86 if you round the two decimal places, and this is the actual distance of side B, so it's in meters. So 3,165.86 meters is the length of side B of the oblique triangle. And so now notice, you actually have a right triangle that's actually formed from the 35 degree angle and the height of the mountain, which was length h. And now we know the hypotenuse of that right triangle, which was side b. And so that is now 3,165.86 meters is the length of side b. And we have a 35 degree angle, and we also have the side h, which is opposite the 35 degree angle. So we're going to use the sine function because we can actually use the sine function as opposite divided by hypotenuse for right triangles. And so sine of 35 degrees is actually opposite, which is h, divide by hypotenuse length, which is 3,165.86 meters. And so if you want to get h by itself to find out the height of the mountain, multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator, 3,165.86. And so h is equal to 3,165.86 times sine of 35 degrees, which would be 3,165.86 times sine of 35 degrees is approximately 1,815.86, if you round the two decimal places, meters. And so this is the height, h, which is 1,815.86 meters. However, you have to keep in mind that the transit was actually two meters high. So the height h of the mountain is actually two more meters. So the height of the mountain is 1,815.86 plus two meters for the height of the transit, which will be the height of the mountain is 1,817.86 meters. So this finishes our video on the law of sines. We talked about how to use the law of sines to solve oblique triangles, and we also talked about how to solve applied problems using the law of sines. If you have any questions about any examples of this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while I work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about the ambiguous case for the law of sines.